Welcome everyone to History 2315 World History 1 for the fall semester of 2020. I'm Dr. Davey and I'll be your instructor this semester. Um, so to let you know what we're going to be dealing with here in this first week, obviously as you're all very much aware, this is an unusual semester uh, with the ongoing COVID uh, crisis, the pandemic and the lockdown and, and a lot of the sort of chaos that's uh, come with the beginning of this semester. Um, just to let you all know, what we're going to be doing this week is essentially just getting our bearings, um, getting familiar with the class and with Blackboard. Um, there's not going to be any instruction this week, but basically in this video and in the uh, joining PowerPoint lecture, I'm just going to be going through some of the key parts of our syllabus and our class. Um, so you need to know that for this week, your responsibility is to read through the syllabus in its entirety. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me by email. Um, and also read through some of the uh, adjoining documents uh, and poking around on Blackboard to sort of understand how the, the page works and how the course is going to work as we move forward in the semester. Um, so to introduce myself, as I mentioned, I'm your instructor. Uh, my name is Dr. Joe Davey. I received my bachelor's degree in history from Michigan State University in 2006, and I got my PhD from that same institution in 2015. Um, there's a few years of a gap there in between where I uh, kind of bounced around. I've, I've studied at the University of Illinois in Urbana-Champaign, uh, the School of uh, Oriental and African Studies in London, um, and the University of Nigeria in Suka, which is in uh, the Igbo land region of southeastern Nigeria. Um, so that kind of dovetails nicely with my expertise. I am an Africanist historian by training, uh, but I did get teaching fields uh, when I was doing my PhD in general African history, uh, world history, and African and African American studies with a particular focus on the diasporic communities of the Atlantic. Uh, my work pretty much looks at social mobility within West African slave systems in the 19th century, uh, namely when we're seeing a shift from what they call slave trading to legitimate trading. Um, and, and so what's happening here is that slowly the slave trade is being suppressed, and so slaves are, are sort of building up on the West African coast and changing the societies where they're coming to outnumber their uh, freeborn counterparts. So uh, that's basically my work looks at those kinds of issues. I look at uh, Atlantic world trade systems, um, indigenous slave systems in Africa, um, issues of economics, politics, and social mobility. And I tend to do that mostly through the lens of a life history of somebody named King Jaja of Okobo. Uh, he was born in 1821, and he was a, a, in land in Nigeria. Uh, and then he was taken as a slave down to the Niger Delta trading state of Bani, where he uh, quickly rose up through the ranks and became very, very wealthy. Um, when he took head of a household there, uh, a, a sort of socio-political economic unit within that state, uh, he was able to actually start a civil war, break away from the community of Bani, and establish his own trading state of Apobo. From there, about the 1870s onward, he monopolized the palm oil trade, uh, which was a major burgeoning trade uh, during the Industrial Revolution, um, and he ultimately would be exiled by the British to the West Indies because he was kind of getting in the way of them making money uh, in West Africa. So... Uh, I worked in the U.S., Europe, and West Africa. I've done archival research in all three locations. Um, I also really, really heavily, as most Africanists tend to, uh, I rely very heavily on oral evidence. And so I, I've conducted probably somewhere in the hundreds now of oral interviews with people in Nigeria and the U.K. Uh, and recently I've actually been speaking with some Igbo expats here in the United States and doing oral interviews with them as well. Um, so I'm fluent in uh, the Nigerian language uh, known as Igbo, um, and as I'm also, so I have a functional understanding of, of West African Pidgin English, which fluency is kind of hard to gauge in, in a non-structured language like Pidgin English. Um, but while I was at Michigan State University, I was also an editorial assistant for the Journal of West African History. Um, I do have experience in K-12 education. Uh, I worked in, in some Detroit area schools, charter schools, um, with fifth and sixth graders for a few years, and, and then I also uh, ran a, I was a program manager for something called the uh, National Endowment for the Humanities Africa and World History Summer Teaching Institute. Uh, I did that between 2013 and 2015. Uh, long story short, that's just helping high school and middle school educators better integrate Africa into world history classrooms. Um, so, 
that's what I'm all about uh, intellectually or academically or professionally. Um, on a personal note, I, I'm not a Houstonian myself. Uh, I'm a, a native Michigander. Um, I'm originally from the Metro Detroit area. Then I spent uh, more years than I care to admit in mid-Michigan, right around Michigan State's campus. Um, I moved to Houston in 2016, which means I'm just now starting my fifth year here at UHD. Uh, my wife, uh, the reason that I moved and stayed down here, uh, she is a native Houstonian, and she just recently gave birth to our first daughter in April. Uh, so, uh, in addition to two really, really, really curious cats who somehow know when I'm recording a video lecture, you might see uh, my daughter, uh, Genevieve, or, or my, my cats kind of pop up in the video lectures or office hours from time to time. So, don't be surprised. At least, you know, you don't have to deal with the, the cat allergy or anything like that when we're doing it all remotely. Um, so, that brings us to uh, the major thing for this week, just what you're all responsible for here in week one. I'm sure that there's a lot of confusion and people are probably a little nervous to get this rather unusual semester underway. Uh, but like I said uh, right up front, we're not, we don't have any course instruction this week. There's no class material you're responsible for, no required readings. Uh, but in lieu of those kinds of weekly lectures and readings that you would normally be doing, uh, I am going to ask that you take this first week to go ahead and purchase the course textbook. Um, I've listed the textbook information, including the exact ISBN number, in our course syllabus in this PowerPoint lecture uh, that you're seeing here in week one. Um, and so uh, the few things I want to point out about that, it's an ebook. I think it retails for around 60 bucks from the publisher. Um, it'll be the only resource I'm requiring you all to uh, go out and get this semester. Um, and it'll be something that you can, once you've purchased it, you'll have access to it immediately. Um, and so there's, you know, not going to have that lag time of having it shipped through Amazon. The other thing I wanted to point out about our course textbook is that you absolutely must get volume one. Um, I can sort of, you're going to be a little bit lost in terms of page numbers and where we're at with the readings and stuff. Um, if you have an older or, or sort of earlier edition of our textbook, uh, but that's not the end of the world. The information is largely the same. Now, with all that being said, you have to get volume one. If you end up getting volume two of Worlds Together, Worlds Apart by Robert Tigner and a handful of other authors, um, then you're going to see a bunch of information that we're not going to be talking about because it only covers everything that's in the second phase of this class, which is world history too. Um, so, in addition to purchasing the textbook, you also want to make sure you go into our discussion forum. Uh, so, for the first week, the discussion forum is just an introduction. There, I want you to introduce yourself to the class and just tell us a little bit about yourself, your name, uh, your year at UHD, your major, and maybe any personal or professional goals that you might be willing to share with the class. Um, so, in addition to those two things, I also expect this week that you are going to become very familiar with our course structure and policy. Um, and so really, this is where I'm asking you to take some time to read through what I've posted up on Blackboard thus far, uh, mostly the course syllabus, but there's also a document up there where I talk about email etiquette and contacting uh, your instructor or me. Uh, long story short, the best way to do that is just to send me a direct email davyj at uhd.edu. I check that way more readily than I do the Blackboard messaging system, and that will actually come right through to my phone. So you can bother me while I'm watching dinner, reading to my kid, or, or trying to catch an Astros game or something. Um, so finally, the last thing you need to do this week is just access this video, which if you're watching it, the assumption is that you figured that out. Um, and to take a look at the PowerPoint lecture that I posted for this week, just kind of walking us through some of the assessments for the class. Um, so there, I don't want to get too long-winded in this. I'm not going to walk through every assignment, every assessment. I am just going to talk briefly about lectures um, and then very briefly about the discussion forums because those are the things that, you, that we're going to kind of hit the ground running. You're going to be expected to access lectures next week and to contribute to those discussion forums. Um, so, as far as lectures goes, this is an asynchronous online course, and this is just a big fancy way of saying we don't have a set time and date in which we meet. Um, the way this is going to work is everything in the class works on kind of a weekly basis. Um, and so, when it comes to lectures, every week by 5 p.m. on Monday, I will post up a PowerPoint lecture. 
These PowerPoint lectures are detailed. They address a lot of what you're going to be seeing in the, in the required readings as well. Um, but they're very detail oriented and we kind of look, we tend to look at a few case studies here and there, um, try to look at some major developing trends in world history. Uh, but those are required materials. You have to read through the PowerPoint lectures every single week. My expectation is that you will work through it by Sunday. So I post up the lecture on Monday. You by Sunday have read it at some point um, and understood all the information therein. Um, now, that also, that doesn't exonerate you from the weekly required readings. There is going to be a lot of information that is redundant or repetitive there. I naturally am going to be talking about what you're reading about in the textbook, but I'm not always going to be talking exclusively about textbook information. Um, a lot of times I tend to go off course and I talk about something that maybe I feel the textbook doesn't cover so well. Um, or something that is just totally absent from the textbook narrative that I think is very important and needs to be introduced to the class. Um, so that's just a big disclaimer saying you are re responsible for all of the required material. And the required material for our course is the PowerPoint lectures that are posted weekly and the required readings. Now, in addition to all that, I'm going to be posting up videos like you're watching right now every single week. Um, and so, well, I should say most weeks, there are a few weeks where we have shortened instruction or a lesson plan that I don't think needs video clarification. And I'll let you know on those weeks when I'm not going to post one up. But for the most part, every week I will be posting up these video lectures. These are not required. Um, so I know that some people tend to learn better from watching somebody speak uh, from a video lecture sort of format. Um, and I do that, th these videos largely for them. But also, I kind of, uh, I'm not nearly as detail oriented. There's been a lot of research done that says when you post up a video lecture to an online class, you don't have a great deal of time to get your point across. Um, and so I, I try to keep my video lectures as brief as I possibly can because just the research and the evidence has proven that people can't pay attention for that long when it's a talking head on a screen. So. I try to just focus on the big picture issues there. I point out patterns of cause and effect. I look at the significance of the historical trends that we're investigating in the PowerPoint lectures. In other words, uh, you know, to put it kind of bluntly, I cut through the nonsense and I try to get down right to the key points that should be coming out from that lecture. Um, and so those videos won't be as detail oriented. They're largely just going to be trying to get you to see why we're talking about those things during that week. Um, so. That's my spiel on lectures. The video lectures are not required. There's no new information introduced in those. They're just meant to help and clarify. Um, and so if you find yourself sort of struggling with what you're supposed to be taking away from the PowerPoint lectures, my first recommendation would be to go immediately to the video lecture, and that will give you some uh, indication of what I think is sort of the important lesson that needs to be pulled out from the weekly lectures. Um, so the other and, and really kind of the final thing I'm going to talk about, we do have some exam stuff, some quiz stuff that I'm going to have you reading over in the PowerPoint lectures this week. But I did want to talk about discussion forums. In, in a sort of middle level, which is what this class is, a middle level university class, it's very unusual around the United States that you're going to find people giving out homework. Um, and I'm certainly no different. Uh, and to put it real real bluntly, uh, we don't like grading homework, so we don't give it out on a weekly basis. Um, and so, and I definitely don't want to, I'm not interested in getting into the habit of giving you all busy work just to make you do something. Uh, there's a point or a purpose behind every assessment that I give. Uh, but the discussion forums are a weekly assignment that you're expected to engage in. Uh, and they're really rather straightforward. What's going to happen with the discussion forums is um, I will post up by Thursday of every week. I think 5 p.m. is what I said in the syllabus, so that's what I'll follow. I'll post up a discussion question, uh, and the question is going to have something to do with the weekly required reading and the weekly required lecture. Um, and so it'll be asking you something from there, and you need to respond to this discussion question every week. Um, and you need to respond in prose form, meaning that it's written out, full sentences, actual uh, punctuation, um, grammatical correctness, uh, uh, no typos. I'm expecting to see um, a well-constructed and well-thought-out paragraph in response to these questions every week. And for those of you who are unfamiliar, a full paragraph is four to five meaningful and connected sentences. 
Um, that's what makes a full paragraph. Uh, you can't just start randomly pulling, I have one sentence about this and one sentence about that. They need to connect in some way. Um, so in order to get credit, and the way I grade these discussion forums is that there's it's a credit, no credit basis. You either have fulfilled the requirements for the week and I say, yes, you get credit, um, or you haven't and I say, no, you don't get credit and here's why. Um, so I'm gonna post this question up every week by Thursday, 5 p.m. You have to respond by Sunday at 11.59 p.m. Um, so the idea here is that you are going to be giving specific evidence showing that you've read uh, the required readings for the week, showing that you've worked through the lecture or the PowerPoint, um, and, and really understand what we're talking about that week. Um, and so then you will go in and respond. You won't be able to see anybody else's responses uh, until you have crafted your own. This is to help avoid plagiarism. Uh, but it, the idea is that you're gonna go up and respond with a, at least a full paragraph. That's the minimum to get credit. Um, and you're gonna give evidence from the required reading. And if necessary, you can also draw in information from the lectures. Uh, but if you do not have cite in-text citations, and I've given an example in the PowerPoint lecture for this week of what a good response looks like, um, you will not get credit. You have to give uh, an actual in-text citation that refers to the required reading um, at, for each week. And so that's how these discussion forums are gonna work. You have to respond by 11.59 p.m. Sunday night every week, or you will not get credit. I don't take late responses on these discussion forums. Um, and the reason for that is because of how I grade them. The way this works is there's about 15 weeks in a semester, and I'm gonna estimate that maybe two weeks, like the first week and probably the last week, and maybe even a third week somewhere in between. I don't post, uh, I would say probably for your midterm, there won't be a discussion question. So overall, there's gonna be about 12 opportunities to respond to these discussion questions. You can skip two of them over the course of the semester, but, if you wanna get full credit for your discussion forum portion of the grade, you need to have 10 credited responses by the end of the semester. Um, and in the syllabus and in the PowerPoint for this week, I walked through how the grading sort of pans out at the end of the, the academic semester. Um, 10 credited responses gets you 100% for discussion forums. Nine is a 90%, eight, 80, so on and so forth until you get down to six credited responses is a 60%. If you have five or fewer credited responses, uh, my attitude is that you have not even done half of the work that you're being asked to do for the semester and you get 0% um, for the discussion forums. I don't give credit for five or fewer responses. Um, so the only other things I wanna say about those discussion forums, and I've given you some examples of what a good and a bad answer would look like, uh, but, what I do want to point out is I do not want to see quotes in these uh, discussion uh, answers. It, the, it just, your, your forum response is only a paragraph long. You do not need to quote anything I said or anything the textbook said. What I'm asking you to do is not quote something, but to paraphrase it, meaning that you read it, you understand what it said, and you put it very simply to your reader and you give a citation. Um, so I'm asking that you paraphrase the information that you're reading through every week, not just give me a straight quote. If you just put down a quote, then I'm not going to give you credit. The last and final thing I do want to touch on here with the discussion forums is an issue that we'll revisit when we talk about term IDs in the, in the midterm exam. And when we uh, start discussing uh, what I want to see in your papers, it's a, a key issue in all university classes and it's plagiarism. Um, these discussion forums are opportunities where you can get tagged for plagiarism if you're not being careful. So I want to send that warning out very clearly. I take plagiarism very, very seriously. And, and most people in the social sciences and humanities do as well. Um, and so what, uh, what is really key here is to understand what plagiarism is um, and when you're committing it. Because plagiarism, unlike cheating, the intention to plagiarize doesn't have to be there. Um, you may not know you're plagiarizing, but your penalty is still going to be the same. It goes back to that old axiom that um, ignorance is not an excuse. It doesn't necessarily exonerate you from, from having committed plagiarism. Uh, it is your responsibility as students at UHD to know what plagiarism is and to avoid it at all costs. Um, so any idea or statement taken from another source needs to be given a uh, citation. 
So what I mean by that, and that people get confused around this idea. And, and what we say is you don't need a citation if something is considered common knowledge. Um, so an example I could draw out that, that most people are familiar with would be the Atlantic slave trade. If I say millions of Africans were forced to migrate across the Atlantic in the Atlantic slave trade between 1460 and 1860, I don't need a citation. That's common knowledge. Everybody knows millions of people were taken out of Africa. I'm not saying anything specific. Now, if I say 12.5 to 13.5 million Africans were forced to migrate across the Atlantic during the Atlantic slave trade, I now need a citation. It took years of research and work and publications to get down to that number of 12.5 to 13.5 million. And therefore, it represents work that somebody else did, and I am borrowing that information. Therefore, I need a citation for that. Um, and so that's what we mean about the difference between just information and common knowledge. Um, so you need a citation for any information that is not common knowledge uh, it, it, that you are drawing from another source. And that source could be my lectures, that could be the textbook. Um, so if you're not giving a citation, even if you're paraphrasing it, you are committing plagiarism. Now, the other type of plagiarism that I tend to see a lot, especially in online courses, is the old uh, kind of classic copy and paste plagiarism. If you copy and paste anything ever, you very least you need quotation marks around it and you need a citation to give credit to the source. Now, as I already said, in these discussion forums, I do not accept quotations. It's too short and I don't want to see them. I want to see your words, not someone else's. Uh, but with the paper and then some other venues in academia, you're going to find that you, you're given an opportunity to provide quotations. But if you take something word for word out of my lecture and you don't put quotation marks around it, even if you cite it, you're committing plagiarism. Because what you're saying by not putting quotation marks around it is, this is my interpretation of what Dr. Davey said in his lecture but it's not your interpretation. You're taking what I'm saying word for word and that's plagiarism. Um, so just understand those rules around uh, plagiarism. Uh, to let you know, the way I, I work with this is, uh, look, I'm not gonna just come with, bring the hammer down on the first offense um, in, in these discussion forums. If you commit plagiarism in one of the discussion forums the first time, you just don't get credit for that week and, and I'll explain why. Um, if you do it a second time, you are now at risk because you've already been warned you're now at risk uh, for technically losing all the credit for the entire semester in the discussion forum. Now, if it happens again and again, a third time, a fourth time, then you start running into some very severe penalties. You might end up actually just failing the course outright. I can give you an automatic zero for repeated or grievous instances of plagiarism. Um, and so long story short, that's really, really, really unpleasant for every party involved. I don't like it. You're not going to like it. I promise you that. So just avoid plagiarism at all costs. You're better off take it, losing credit um, it, because you weren't prepared to do something or you didn't have the information readily at hand. Um, it, it's better off to lose credit that way than to you know lose credit and then also risk taking on these much larger repercussions. Um, and so you know definitely don't double down on the fact that you weren't prepared by cheating or plagiarizing. It's, you're never going to win in that regard. Um, so. I really do want to end this on a much happier note than me basically hounding you all about plagiarism and stuff. So I am going to say just take a look through the rest of the PowerPoint uh, um, lecture that I put up for this week. It's not really a lecture as much as just walking through some of the key points in our syllabus. We have two exams, three quizzes that are just designed to be uh, making, they're making sure you're staying up on the reading. I will post a study guide for the exams, but not for the quizzes. Uh, the quizzes are kind of just made to see if you're following along in time. Um, and we're going to talk more about the exam and the build up to it. I'll post a review and a study guide, and I'm certainly not, this won't be the last you hear about it until our midterm. Uh, but I really do look forward to working with you all this semester. Uh, I've given you some other key information in the PowerPoint. Uh, but we are going to begin our work in earnest next week, so it's really important you get the course textbook. And I really want to tell you all, if there's anything you need, feel free to email me at davyj, D-A-V-E-Y-J, at uhd.edu. Uh, my email address is in the uh, syllabus. It's, it's all over the course page. It's pretty easy to get a hold of me. Um, so one thing I always want to point out to students is be proactive. That's always going to work out in your benefit. 
Um, don't wait until a deadline passes to tell me you have a, com- a scheduling conflict. Um, you know, make sure that you're, you're reaching out to me when you're encountering material you don't understand. Reach out in advance so that you don't wait until an exam comes and goes and you've already lost credit. Um, my jo- you're never bothering me as an instructor when you reach out and ask questions. It's my job to be responsive to you all um, and, so, and, and to try to help you work through this material. So don't hesitate to reach out to me. I'm always available for questions. Um, and certainly if you need anything this week, feel free to reach out. Uh, well, it's good meeting you all, for whatever that means in terms of posting up a video. But I really do look forward to working with you all this semester uh, and, and sort of taking some of these challenges that have been thrown at us in the era of COVID-19. Um, but feel free to, to reach out if you need anything at all. I'm here for you and we'll uh, get rolling with uh, my, with World History 1 next week. Take care.